students, this is lesson 4-6. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to determine whether a relation is, is a function and to find the domain and range and to use function notation. Go ahead and do the review here. Some really important terms for you to think about. All right, the first thing we're going to learn how to do is how to use a mapping diagram to tell whether or not a relationship is a function. Remember that the definition of function is that each input is, is paired with exactly one output value. So we have two sets here, and we're going to use this diagram to help us. We're going to do this twice, so I'm going to clone this. So what I'm going to do is call this my domain. Remember, domain is the input or the x values, and the other jar here is going to be the range. So I'm going to take all my domain values from this first set and put them in here, negative 3, 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to put all my range values in the range jar. So that's 1, 2, we already have one, we don't need to write that again, and four. And then I'm going to use uh, arrows to map from one jar to the other according to the ordered pairs. So negative three goes with one, zero goes with two, one goes with one, and two goes with four. And then I'm going to look closely at the diagram and make sure there's only one arrow going from each domain value to the range value because every input must be paired with exactly one output. So if you see more than one arrow here, so there's one arrow from negative three, one arrow from zero, one arrow from one, and one arrow from two, that means it's a function. All right, go ahead, you try the second jar. I'll let you see if you can fill in the correct domain values, range values, and then put arrows going to match up the ordered pairs and see if you think it's a function. You should have decided that this is not a function and that's because right here the input 5 has two outputs, both 1 and 2. And if that happens, it's not a function. Alright, you can try this problem 1. Okay, another way to decide if a relationship is a function is to analyze the graph of the relationship using the vertical line test. If any vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph for some domain value, that means there is more than one range value for that domain value, so it would not be a function. So I'll show you how to do that here. Um, we're going to graph two things. The first thing is just a bunch of points to graph, and the second thing is an equation to graph. Go ahead and put those points on the graph, and then I'll talk about how you use the vertical line test. Okay, now we need a vertical line. And what I'm going to do is just pass this line uh, across this graph. And if it hits more than one point at one time, then it's not a function. Notice that for each of these inputs, three negative 2, negative 4, we're only hitting one point. So we're going to say this is a function. Okay, uh, go ahead and uh, make the graph for the next one, and then I'll um, show you how to test that. All right, if you graph this, this is uh, what it looks like. And uh, you should connect these dots because we are graphing a rule which means any values are possible inputs. Now, if I run my vertical line test, you'll see that this vertical line intersects that graph in only one place always. Another thing you might think about is, will this thing ever curve back? And if you analyze the equation, you can see that it's going to just keep increasing. So for each input value, so no, it'll never curve back. 
All right, go ahead and try this uh, problem two, and I'll check back with you. All right, uh, as you've seen, functions can be represented as equations of all the x and y, such as y is negative three x plus one, below is the same equation written using function notation. Notice that f of x replaces y, it is read f of x. The letter f is the name of the function, not a variable. The function notation is used to emphasize that the function value of f of x depends on the independent variable x. So we use the parentheses to highlight the uh, input or depend, independent variable. And you can use any letter you want. So here's a, a, an example of a function and we're going to evaluate that. And really all you have to do to evaluate a function is substitute a value in for the correct variable. In this case we want to know how many words she can type in seven minutes and x is the number of minutes. So we're going to start with our function here and just substitute 7 for x. Now remember that this is t of 7, or um, the output when the input is 7, it doesn't mean t times 7. All right, and 65 times 7 is 455. So she types 455 words per minute words in seven minutes. All right, let me try one. All right, the next thing we're going to learn how to do is finding the range of the function. And remember that the range is the same as the output or the y values. So what we're looking for are the y values when the x values, which is the domain, or the input values are these four numbers. So we're just going to evaluate this function for the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. So f of 1 is 3 times 1 minus 2. f of 2 is 3 times 2 minus 2. f of 3, 3 times 3 minus 2. And f of 4 is 3 times 4 minus 2. And then we just evaluate those. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 equals 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. And 12 minus 2 is 10. So our range values, which is our output values, are 1, 4, 7, and 10. You try that. The last thing we're going to do is just talk about what a reasonable domain and range is. Again, remember, um, domain is the input values or x values, independent variable. Range is the output. So we got a problem here. Lorena has four rolls of ribbon to make party favors. Each roll can be used to make 30 favors. The function f of r equals 30 times r represents the number of favors f of r that can be made with r rolls. What is a reasonable domain? So what are possible input values? And our input is variable is r, which is the rolls. So um, we're going to say that the least number of rolls that we can use, so this is our domain, um, is 0. And that's the number of rolls. And the most we can have is 4. So our range of values, or our um, our domain values go from 0 to 4. Now our range is based on our domains. Whatever the minimum domain is, that's going to give us our minimum range value, which is capital F of 0, and that's 30 times 0, which is 0, and that's the minimum. The max would be represented by the max input value, which is 4, and 30 times 4 equals 120. And now we're going to graph that. And uh, I'm going to choose my 
x values from my reasonable domain, which is up to four rolls, and my y values is my re reasonable range, which is up to 120, so I can go by tens here, that should work good. So those are the values. Uh, and then I'm just going to graph it. Zero rolls, zero times 30 is zero. And one times 30 is 30. Two times 30 is 60. Three times 30 is 90. And four times 30 is 20. Now, we're going to assume that you can use a half a roll. So this is a continuous function, so we can go ahead and draw that line in. All right, you try that. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Go ahead and do the lesson check, and I'll uh, see you next time in class.